Yo guys, welcome to the Zelda Fiction. Today we are gonna see, what if Naruto fell in love with Mizukagi. Part 1. Huge shout out to Toby wants a cookie for this story. If you end up liking this video, please consider subscribe, so without further ado, let's get into the video. The council was shifting in their chairs nervously, this was bad, really bad. They had made this arrangement before the Chunin exams, before Jureya had taken the boy as an apprentice, before he had convinced Tsunade to come back. Mate Rumi had taken over as Mizukagi, the bloodline Pruj had been stopped, and the Mist wanted to form an alliance with the Leaf. They wanted a political marriage, and the council was happy to let young Naruto Uzumaki go to the Mist, at least they were before. Now they could see they had given up a very powerful shinobi, one who was completely loyal to them, and they couldn't get him back without destroying the alliance with the Mist. Tsunade was furious, I come back to the Leaf, and the first thing I find out is you're sending the kid away who convinced me to come here. The pink hair woman started to speak, we're incredibly sorry, we had no idea what we were doing at the time, if we had known what the boy could do, we never would have sent them away. Tsunade released killer intent at the council that made even the experienced ninja flinch, so you only regret now that you find out he's useful to you. You're marrying a 14-year-old to a 17-year-old, I changed the ages a bit to make it more believable, for crying out loud. There's nothing we can do about it now, he's going to marry the woman whether we like it or not. What's done is done, I say we take comfort in the fact that they will be pleased with who we chose, and make sure the bow at least enjoys being married. Said the Warhawk Noah's Danzo. Tsunade softened slightly at that, on that much you're right, we need to make sure Naruto's happy in the mist, both for the political and personal reasons. I trust we're going to make him a chunin, it would be kind of insult if we sent the Mizukage a genin. The council member stepped up, of course, he will be given the rank of Chunin, he performed fantastically in the exams, and even managed to stop the Kazikage's son for destroying the village. Tsunade nodded, I've met Mei Terumi before, Naruto will definitely be happy with her looks, not that he's that shallow, she's a very nice person from what I've seen of her, and she's also a very powerful shinobi, I guess if he was gonna marry someone I'm glad it was her. The council nodded, taking a small amount of comfort in the fact that Naruto would be marrying someone that would make him the envy of any man beautiful, kind, and powerful to boot, the complete pack of gay. Mate Rumi was on her way to the Hidden Leaf, her advisor out by her side, Mizukagi-sama, I do hope you're not too angry with us for forcing this marriage on you, from what I've heard you're marrying a fine young man, Ao told her. The Mizukagi smiled, no, I realize it was a necessary sacrifice, and if he really did pass the Chunin exams as a rookie, then he must be a good shinobi, hopefully he's cute too, Mei knew she herself was a beautiful woman, with long auburn hair, perfect curves, and full lips, she had most the men in the mist drooling over her. You're nervous that he's a Jinjuriki are you, we've had a bad past with him after all. Ao asked. Mei laughed, one bad Jinjuriki doesn't mean they all are, besides it looks like Yagru may have been under someone else's influence. The message said he had had a bit of a rough childhood, maybe we can relate to one another. Now nodded, he hoped this would go well, Mei was almost like a daughter to him, he prayed she ended up happy. Ma married Naruto asked dumbfounded. Tsunade had just explained the whole situation to him, the marriage, him being transferred to the mist, his everything. Tsunade gave him a soft smile, Naruto I know you weren't expecting this, but we've done our best to make sure this is a good thing for you. I can personally tell you Mei is beautiful, kind, and a damn good shinobi. Naruto frowned, but I have to leave the village, I'll never be Hokage, I'll barely ever see my friends. Tsunade stopped him you'll be the ambassador to the leaf, so you'll be in the village and see your friends plenty. As for being Hokage, I've got something that may be a small consolation for that. Naruto was curious, what could make up for losing his dream. Tsunade pulled out a small scroll and gave it to him. Your father want us to give this to you when you made Chunin. Naruto's eyes went wide, his father, they knew who his father was, this was awesome. He opened the scroll and started to read. Naruto. If you're reading this then I'm dead and so is your mother. I've instructed Jiraiya and the old man not to tell you until you make Chunin, and even then you can't tell anyone. Son, I'm Minato Namikaze the fourth Hokage of the Hidden Leaf, and I have a lot of enemies, particularly in Iowa, who would stop at nothing to kill you if they found out. I would have liked to have had Jiraiya adopt you, but with his spy network, I doubt that could happen. If your mother was Kashina Yuzumaki, holder of the QB, and if she's dead also, odds are the fox was sealed inside of you. I'm sorry to have put that burden on you, but I have faith you can protect the village even better than your mother did. Before I died Jureya told me that he believed I would be the one who would bring peace to the world, but if I'm dead then I can't to that, so I'm counting on you too. As Hokage my duty was to protect this village, and if peace was brought to the world, then village would truly be safe. I want you to bring peace to the world Naruto, something even I as Hokage couldn't do. I love you and have complete faith in you. Your father, Minato Namikaze. 
Naruto couldn't believe what he had just read, he really thought I would be the one to bring peace to the shinobi world screw Hokage this is way better. Tsunade laughed, Naruto still had a chance to be happy, to achieve something great. Don't tell anyone about this alright, Iwa would send their whole army after you. Also you'll be getting complete access to the Namikaze fortune which is quite large, and to all of his and your mother's scrolls on Jutsu. Last but not least, I've got a picture of the two of them on the day they found out about you, as you can see they were quite happy to be having you. Naruto smiled and took the picture. She was right they were both very happy, and he had feeling he would be now too. He had new dream and family, things were really starting to look up for him. Naruto was walking towards the hospital nervously to see his teammates, he was wearing his new Chunin vest with pride when he stopped at the door, trying to think of a way to tell his teammates all of this. He was the one getting married and he could barely process it. Naruto chose winging it as his best option, seeing as how it had always worked before. He took a deep breath and opened the door, hey guys, how's it going? Sakura went to yell at the young Jinjiriki, Naruto Yubaka, you almost woke up Sasuke she stopped when she noticed the Chunin vest he was wearing, you made Chunin. Yeah, but that's kinda just the tip of the iceberg, Naruto was cut off by the now wake Sasuke before he could finish. The dobe made Chunin, how? The bedridden boy screamed. The Kashi decided to speak up, Sasuke we should be happy for him, no need to yell. Obviously the council felt he did well enough to be promoted. Well done Naruto, I also heard Jiraiya san is training you, very impressive. He finished with one of his classic eye smiles. HN, congratulations I'm going for walk, need to clear my head, Sasuke said getting out of his hospital bed. He walked out giving Naruto and Sakura a slight shove as he left, much to the pink hair girl's dismay. Naruto, why did you have to come in here flaunting your vest like that, you upset Sasuke. Well I guess it's not really your fault. Congratulations. Sakura finished half-heartedly. I sit down we have a lot to talk about Naruto spent about 10 minutes telling them everything other than his heritage and waited nervously for a response. Bakashi was the first to speak, well that's great Naruto, although I don't know what the leaf will do without its favorite knucklehead ninja. He told his student, trying to hide the fact that he would really miss the boy. Naruto had brought some light back into his life and he was sad he was going to lose that. Naruto I'm so sorry, you come in here with great news and all I do is yell at you. I'm gonna miss you a lot and I'm sure Sasuke will too. We were finally starting to become a real team. Salute told him with a sad smile. She walked up and gave the boy a small hug which the boy returned, very surprised. Thanks Akura-chan, that means a lot to me. We're gonna go down and meet my future wife in about an hour, can round up everybody else so I see them? Naruto asked. Of course, I'll make sure Sasuke is there too. How long to have before you to the mist? Sakura asked with a smile. About a month, Naruto responded. Great, we'll make sure it's the best month you've ever had. She said running out of the room happily. Naruto stood in the doorway confused, I don't get it, usually she's all mad and tries to hit me, but she got all nice and even gave me hug, what's up with that? The Kashi laughed women are confusing creatures Naruto, very confusing creatures. Kinda funny that the most wonderful thing in the world belongs to the most confusing things in the world. What's the most wonderful thing in the world? Naruto asked. The Kashi smiled, you'll find out on your wedding night. The duo from the mist, Ao and Mei, stopped at the clearing in the forest, they had been told to wait for someone to come and escort them the rest of the way. Not that they really needed it, it was more of a political gesture than anything. Ureya of the Sanin is supposed to be the one meeting us here, I think you two have met before, Ao told her. Mei scowled at the memory of the old pervert, oh yeah we met all right, and when see him, I'm gonna show him just what happens to people who peep on Mei Terumi. Ao cringed, only a few men had been stupid enough to peep on Mei, and they ended up burns in the worst possible locations. Needless to say it wasn't pretty, can at least hold off till we get to the village. Mei frowned, we'll see. Just as she spoke, the white hair pervert appeared, Mei immediately got into position to burn the sand into kingdom come, but he cut her off, look, I know you probably dislike me, but you can beat the crap out of me, after I've told everything you need to know about your future husband. Mei hesitated but nodded, a little surprised by his seriousness. Jiraiya handed her a large bag and began to speak, in that bag is all of his father's scrolls and the Uzumaki scrolls on sealing and jutsu, mainly on wind since that's his element, also there's some water and fire scrolls in there, he has a slight affinatony in each. Also I've put all of the things he should be training on with the toads while I'm away. Finally, I've placed a booklet in there with all of my current knowledge on the Akatsuki in it. Mei was trying to take in everything she was being told, wait father, I thought he was an orphan, and what's the Akatsuki? Yurei aside, the Akatsuki are an organization trying to obtain the tailed beasts, for some unknown reason, we believe they may have had something to do with the situation with the last Mizukagi, and as for his parents, that should be explained to you by Naruto, not me. 
May nodded, processing everything he had just told her, so what's he like? Uraya smiled as he thought of his latest student, he can come of a little brash and loud, but once you get to know him, you can't help but love the kid. He'd do anything for his friends, and I've never seen the kid give up on anything the whole time I've known him, if he can't do something small he just moves on to something bigger. He's the most amazing kid I've ever seen, and you're lucky to be marrying him. May smiled and rose her eyebrow slightly, you really care about him, don't you? Uraya laughed, I may be a super pervert, but when it comes to those I care about, I'd go to the ends of the earth for them, just like Naruto would, Jiraiya got a slight frown on his face, if anyone asks we never had this conversation, I've got an image to uphold. Tell them I ask you to tell me how your first time with Naruto goes actually that might be good for. He was cut off immediately by May, I've only just decided not to melt your little friend, don't make me change my mind. Forehead girl, what's all this about? What did you have to get all of us together for? Ino asked. I too would like an explanation of your urgency, Shino said, emotionless as ever. Troublesome, I was really enjoying watching the clouds. I'm not going to be able to do that as much now that I'm a Chunin you know. Shikamaru complained. Actually Shikamaru, that's part of the reason I called you guys here, Naruto made Chunin too, but that's not even the half of it, you guys might want to sit down for this. Sakura told them. She had gathered all of the rookie nine, and their senseis, other than Naruto and Kakashi, also team Guy and Aruka were there. All of them raised an eyebrow at what the girl was saying. A few of them smiled when they heard about Naruto making Chunin, Lee of course praised Naruto's power of youth. Once she finished telling them about the marriage and the transfer the smiles faded. None of them really wanted to see Naruto go, Hinata was on the verge of tears. Sakura decided to end the silence, guys I need your help. I want to make Naruto's last month here as good as it can be. Ino raised an eyebrow and looked at Sakura, no offense forehead girl, but since when did you care about Naruto? I always thought you hated him. Sakura frowned and looked at the ground, I never hated Naruto, to be honest his constant asking me out made me feel pretty, and all his encouragement actually made me believe I could become a real ninja. This might sound kinda selfish, but I want Naruto to remember me doing something other than hitting him. Ino looked at her old friend and rival and smiled, alright, if it's that important to you, we'll help you. First off who do we have bringing this May girl over here? When I asked Lady Tsunade she said Jiraiya was going to get her, Sakura didn't get a chance to finish as Kurunai cut her off. What? Lady Tsunade sent that pervert to go get her, no way, me and one of the girls will go see her and make sure Jiraiya didn't try anything on her, Kurunai yelled, she hated perverts, and while she respected Jiraiya, he was definitely a pervert and was not to be trusted around a woman as far as she was concerned, Hinata would you like to come along? Hinata quickly nodded, she want to meet the person who was stealing her Naruto. If she couldn't be the one to make him happy, she sure as hell would see to it Mei did, Mizukagi or not. The others went to get everything else ready, Mei would be there in about 20 to 30 minutes, which wasn't much time, and they all had a few things they wanted to get ready for Naruto and his soon-to-be bride. What the fuck, that little shit is marrying that hot piece of ass, damn some people get all the fucking luck, Haydn, the immortal of the Akasutsuki whined. The ten members of the Akatsuki were gathered to discuss the status of the uncaptured tailed beasts. Wow, five curse words in one sentence, might be a new record for you, Dadara the art crazed explosives expert laughed. Actually, Haydn's record is eight swear words in one sentence, said a man who was wearing an orange mask. Dadara scowled, Toby get out of here, you're not even an official member. But Toby hasn't gotten a cookie, Toby whined. Conan, the blue-haired second in command of the Akatsuki, reached in her cloak and handed him a cookie, here you go Toby, now buy a good boy and run off. Awesome, thanks Conan-chan Toby replied running out of the room. Man, I felt bad for whoever gets him as a partner, Dadara muttered. With his new relationship to the Mizukagi, it would be best to wait to wait to go after him. I trust you all know your new assignments. The leader of the Akatsuki, Noah's pain told them. They all nodded, alright head out, you know what to do. Sorry about them sticking you with the pervert, Karenai told the Mizukagi. They had gotten to her about 5 minutes ago, they were set to reach the leaf in about 10 minutes. It's okay, he actually wasn't too bad, for the most part anyway, May responded with a smile, she had ended up slapping Jurei once, but that was the worst of it. Anada, who had been silent up to this point, finally got the courage to speak, you're going to make Naruto happy aren't you? She asked quickly. May was surprised at the question of course, why do you ask? Anada looked down, he's very important to me. She told her, she was starting to lose control of her stutter. May smiled, starting to understand how she felt about the boy, that's good, how about you tell me all about him on the rest of the way there. Anada gave a small smile, she was more than happy to talk about Naruto. May listened happily learning more about her soon-to-be husband. 
Naruto stood nervously at the gate, Mei was due to arrive at any moment, and several of his friends went out to grab him something, Ino had gotten him different clothes, as she refused for Naruto to meet Mei wearing so much orange. It was a simple long sleeve black shirt, his chunin vest, and black pants. Ino also sent Choji and Shikamaru to get flowers from her parents' shop. Anko had came over when she heard about Naruto's marriage, she had come to like boy after the Chunin exams and gave him a black trench coat with a Yuzumaki swirl on the back. Finally, Kiba gave him the fang of a past Inuzuka dog, a sign of major respect and a way to show everyone in the mist he was backed by the Inuzuka clan, it was connect to a small chain around his neck. He was visibly sweating, Iruka put a hand on his shoulder and whispered to him, Naruto relax, we're all right behind you. She's gonna love you just like we do, it'll go great. Naruto took a deep breath and looked out to see Mei walking up towards the gate. Naruto was speechless as he looked at his soon-to-be wife. She was incredibly beautiful, truly breathtaking, perfect curves, auburn hair, amazing green eyes, and a walk that just screamed sexy. Wow. Just wow, he stuttered. Mei smiled, happy to see him completely under her spell already, thanks, you're pretty cute yourself, she wasn't kidding, the whisker marks were very exotic, and he had a very muscular frame for someone his age. Naruto shook his head and brought himself out of his stupor and brought up the flowers, sorry, these are for you, it's very nice to meet you, this is gonna sound kinda stupid, but how do I greet you, do we shake hands, hug, what? I'm not really used to this kinda thing. Mei brought the flowers to her face and smelled them, they had a fantastic aroma. She gave a small laugh at Naruto's question, I think a hug would be the best choice, a handshake is far too formal. Naruto smiled and walked up to the woman, who quickly enveloped him in a hug, pressing his face in her cleavage for added effect. The blonde blushed heavily and his friends laughed behind him, Anko was the first to speak, wow Gaki, if your face got any redder you'd match the Mizukagi's hair, by the way is that colored, or do the curtains match the drapes? Everyone's jaw hit the floor, only Anko would ask the Mizukagi a question like that. Mei just smirked, sorry, that's for me to know, and Naruto to find out. Naruto nearly passed out after hearing that, Anko just laughed, I think you and I will get along just fine. All of Naruto's friends began to to ask questions of their own, but only Sasuke's managed to get through, you know you're marrying the dead last of the academy, don't you? Sasuke. Kakashi snapped. Mei just smirked, funny, it seems he's wearing a chunin vest and you're not, seems like you've been surpassed by my soon-to-be husband if you ask me. Biba fell on the ground laughing, dude, she so just told you. Hot and funny, lucky you Hanaruto. They were all about to try and start asking questions again, but they were cut off by Naruto, look, I know you guys want to get to know Mei, but I really need to take her to see the old lady, and I'd like to at least try to get to know her a bit on the way, so did you guys mind? They all got the idea and nodded, Naruto looked back at Mei and offered her his arm, shall we head out, Naruto asked thank you Aruka sensei for the teaching me how to be polite towards a woman Naruto thought. Mei smiled and took his arm, and they began to walk to the Hokage's office. Naruto decided to get the biggest question on his mind taken care of first, so you know about the fox already, Mei nodded, do you you know are you? Mei stopped him with her hand, Naruto, I don't hate you, heck I've just met you. If anything I already have a great impression of you, after all you had that many people cared enough to support you with all this. Naruto smiled talk about a feeling a weight lefties of your shoulder. Oh yeah, pervy sage didn't try anything on you did he? Mei shook her head, no, he was actually pretty nice, even gave me a some scrolls for you. Naruto raised an eyebrow, would he give them to you? Just because you have a scroll doesn't mean you can use it, we have to have someone who knows something about that element, ceiling, or one of the toads for the toad scrolls, to teach how to understand what's inside. I'm the only one who can get those scrolls into the mist and find you teachers without them confiscating the scrolls. By the way, Jureya mentioned something about your father, but I had heard you were an orphan, care to explain? Mei asked him. Naruto nodded, we're almost to the homage's office, we should probably wait till we get there before I explain it. Reluctantly, Mei agreed, as much as her curiosity was piqued, she supposed she could wait a bit longer. Sasuke was busy at the training grounds, destroying trees with fireballs and grumbling to himself. He was beyond angry, how dare that damn woman imply he was weak, did she know who he was? It was insulting being looked down on like that, let alone around the others. He continued to grumble when Kakashi walked up to him, care to explain what that whole thing back there was all about. Kakashi asked in his usual nonchalant tone. Sasuke scoffed, humph, I was just giving her the facts, she's marrying the dead last, isn't she? Kakashi didn't look up from his itcha itcha, that's funny, didn't he save your life twice during the Chunin exam? Sasuke scowled, so what if he did, who cares? He just abandoned and us the moment he got any good. All if the sudden he gets all these friends and now he's just leaving, you said it yourself, he's lower than trash now. Forget him, who needs him? I don't, I don't need anyone. Sasuke screamed. 
The Kashi looked up from his book, he's not trash Sasuke, he didn't choose to leave, he's doing it for the village way to minute, this is about you isn't it? You don't want to admit you're gonna miss him. No I'm not, he's just gotten too big of a head, Sasuke snapped. The Kashi sighed, Sasuke, why do you think it's not okay to miss him? Naruto told me you were only he felt he could relate to growing up, and something tells me you feel the same. He's been your rival for years now, you saved his life in the wave, and he saved you from Gara. What, did seeing Itachi again just magically turn back to pain in the ass we met on the first day? Shut up. You want me to say it, fine. I'm gonna miss Naruto. Are you happy now? Sasuke screamed. Yup, that all I needed, see you later, Kakashi said looking back down at his book. Sasuke just stood there dumbfounded, bastard tricked me, he muttered. Tsunade had the Ichiha on her mind as well, she was in the middle reading all of the classified documents she needed to be filled in on now that she was Hokage, and she had just began to read up on some of the secrets of the Ichiha clan, and she was shocked as she began to read the file on the massacre. She was snapped out of her reading when someone knocked on her door, she put the scroll away and yelled, come in. Naruto walked in, his arm hooked with Mei's, hey Bachan, how's it going? Mei looked shocked, you call the legendary Sanin, pervy sage, and Bachan. You must have a death wish. Tsunade had a tick mark on her forehead, I believe he does. Naruto gave his classic foxy grin and scratched the back of his head, how else would you know it was me? Anyway, I brought Mei here to fill her in on everything she doesn't know yet. We should probably start with my dad she's pretty curious about that. Mei nodded, yes, I really would like to know what's going on with the Naruto's father. Tsunade's face got serious, you can't repeat what I'm about to tell you to anyone, it would put you, Naruto, and many others in danger. Mei couldn't possibly have been more curious, alright, will you please just tell me already? Naruto looked at Mei, my father was the yellow flash, Minato Namikaze. Mei was immediately silent, completely shocked, wow well that would explain why you were chosen to contain the QB, and I'm guessing Iwa is who you don't want to find out. Naruto spoke up once again, what about the Akatsuki, how much do you know about them? Only what was in the scroll Jiraiya gave me, Mei told him. Tsunade frowned, almost forgot about them. That reminds me, Naruto, we need to get you training again. The old perv told he wanted you to start with wind scrolls that he gave Mei, so I'm going to have Asuma start training you with wind chakra. Makes sense, when do we start? He asked. In about a week, we wanted to give you a little time to rest, also Asuma want to track down a chakra blade strong enough to contain demon chakra, he was planning on teaching you some wind style kinjutsu. Tsunade replied. Naruto raised an eyebrow, chakra blade, is that like the one that Kisum guy used? Mei decided to onjure that one, yes, but they don't usually look like that, Samahada is unique, they usually just look like normal metal, you can only tell the difference when you channel chakra in it. Is Kisum the only Miss Ninja you've ever met? Naruto shook his head, no I meet one the other swordsman, Zabuza, and his apprentice Haku, she had some kind of ice bloodline. You met Zabuza, is he still alive? Mei asked. No they're both dead, too bad, once they stopped trying to kill us, they were kinda nice, Naruto told her, we marked their graves with his sword. Mei smiled, problem solved Tsunade-san, I can send someone to revive the blade, and Naruto can use that, it's a chakra blade, and a blade that well made can definitely contain the QB's chakra. Naruto raised an eyebrow again, you really think I'm worthy to wield one of the seven great blades, I'm not even sure I could lift it. Mei laughed, trust me Naruto-kun, I'm sure you'll be able to use it quite well. Naruto blushed at the new suffix, thanks Mei-chan. Tsunade nodded, sounds good, well get everything ready, you just keep yourself in shape. Also Naruto-kun, I've got something to teach you as well. Mei told him. What's that? He asked. Will Naruto-kun, I think I'm pretty safe in guessing you're a virgin, and I am too, I think we should get used to being intimate with one another before the honeymoon. We won't be going all the way until the wedding night, but I will be teaching you few fun things leading up to that, said Mei. Naruto had a small trickle of blood coming for his nose. He nodded with a very big blush on his face, causing Mei to laugh, she could tell this was gonna be fun. Mei and Naruto returned from the tower to find that every one of Naruto's had waited so that they could properly meet her. They all questioned the young Mizukagi, Ino asked how she kept herself looking so good, Kiba asked if she was a dog or cat person, Lee asked how bright her flames of youth were, and plenty of other questions. Asuma's question was the first one that was actually relevant, so, what is it that makes you Kage level? Mei smirked, she was hoping someone would ask that, I've got two bloodlines, lava release and boil release, both of which I mastered. Everyone looked in awe, to have mastered two bloodlines was quite impressive. Sakura spoke up next, no offense, but doesn't that mean you've peaked? Mei smirked, you'd think but no, I've mastered everything known about my bloodlines, but that doesn't mean I can't expand on them. 
Naruto looked at the clock and then back at his friends. This has been fun and all. But we need to go to the new apartment Bachin set up for us for the month. They all nodded and waved goodbye. I can't believe C looks that good without dieting, Ino whined. I'm just glad she's a dog person, said Kiba. The new apartment was nice, not extravagant but nice. Naruto changed into a orange pair of shorts and black shirt, he decided to ask Mei about the sleeping arrangements, she was changing in the bathroom, Mei, who's gonna sleep where tonight? Mei walked out and Naruto's jaw hit the floor, she was wearing a blue nightgown showing off plenty of her figure, mainly her long legs and ample chest, we're going to sleep in the same bed silly. She said with a smile. Naruto blushed but nodded and went to lay down in the master bedroom. Mei laid down next to him and laughed, don't you like sleeping next to me? Of course I do it's just look I've never even kissed a girl, so this is kinda new to me, Naruto told her. Mei gave a playful pout, oh no, well don't you worry, I'll give you plenty of affection, you'll get used to it real fast, she said, planting a kiss on his cheek and lying down on her pillow. Naruto was shocked, but smiled soon, this marriage thing was starting to have its perks. The next week went by pretty fast for Naruto. He had been keeping in shape by training with Guy, which was ridiculously hard, but did give him a chance to have him help refine his tojutsu, so it all worked out. He continued to talk with Mei, getting closer with her every day. They discovered they had a very similar past, her with a bloodline purge, and him with a QB being sealed inside of him. Mei continued to embarrass Naruto when they slept in the same bed, cuddling with him and giving him kisses on the cheek, but Naruto didn't really mind all that much, actually he really enjoyed it. Sakura had done her best to be a better friend to Naruto, she even came to visit him and Mei in their apartment. Sasuke had admitted to himself that he was going to miss his rival, but he still refused to admit it to Naruto, though he did make a better effort to be a little nicer to the blonde, he now asked for spares, rather than order them. And he had actually congratulated Naruto and Mei on their so-to-be wedding. The week was one of the best Naruto could remember. The day came that Naruto was set to start learning with Asuma, and Mei was currently on her way to Team Guy's training ground to give him Kubikurumjim, his new swords once wielded by Zabuza. It was still early when the blade came, so Mei knew Naruto would be training with Guy, she decided to surprise him and bring him the sword herself. Naruto was panting heavily when she arrived, oh hey. Mei-chan what are you doing here, he panted. Mei smiled, the Kubikurumjim came, I thought I would bring it to you. You start your elemental training today, so you'll probably need it, she unselfed the massive blade and handed it to Naruto, be careful, you may be strong, but you can't properly lift the blade until you channel chakra into it, and you shouldn't do that till Asuma shows you how. Naruto looked at it wide-eyed, it was just as amazing as he remembered it. He could barely lift it, but something felt right about having it in his hands. Amazing, he murmured. Fenton, who had also been training with Guy, looked at Blade like a child looks at a new toy, oh my gosh, the Kubikurumjim, it's amazing, I can't believe I'm really seeing it in person, she continued to stare in the Blade, then at the person holding it and blushed, she had a thing for weapons, which didn't go unnoticed by Mei. Naruto we should head out, we have just enough time to get there, and Miss Tenton, if you would stop eyeing his sword please, she muttered. Fenton blushed and nodded, Naruto looked a little confused, but followed. As they were walking he asked, what's up Mei-chan, we had plenty of time Naruto didn't get to finish, as Mei slammed her lips into his, Naruto's eyes rolled into the back of his head at his first kiss. When she stopped he slowing got his thoughts to come back to him. Not that I'm complaining, but what was that about? Mei blushed lightly, Naruto-kun, I'm a rather jealous person, and seeing that little weapon girl lying you up, I just felt the need to remind you who you're marrying. Naruto was confused again, Mei-chan, you're the most beautiful girl I've ever seen, you're really nice, and funny, too also, I may not be experienced, but you're definitely a good kisser. Why would I do anything to make you mad, you're awesome. Mei smiled widely, good, I'm glad you think so, she leaned forward and smiled seductively, it had been a good kiss, if you really feel that way, we have about 15 minutes before we have to see Asuma, that leaves 10 minutes all to ourselves, shall we enjoy them? Naruto smiled and nodded, Mei immediately leaned in, and they picked up where they left off, when Mei slipped her in her tongue, he nearly passed out. Asuma looked up to see Naruto running his way, he was about 5 minutes late, and Asuma didn't need to wonder why. Asuma smirked, Naruto, you have a little of Mei's lipstick on your cheek. Naruto turned the cooler of a tomato and wiped it off, oh sorry can we just get started and maybe not mention this to anyone. Asuma laughed, I would think you'd be proud of that, but I guess you're just a shy kid, fine I won't tell anyone. I see you brought the sword. Naruto drew Kubikurumjim and nodded so what do we do first? First, try channeling chakra into it, as little as you can, I want to see how Kubikurumjim handles the QB's chakra, and it will also show me how much chakra control you have, and how long you have before you can fight with your wind chakra properly, Asuma told him. 
Naruto started channeling chakra into blade, trying to use as little as possible, the blade big and glow blue with a slightly red tint. He was trying not to use much chakra, but the blade still shook in his hands. He stopped and Asuma began to speak, well it the chakra just fine, but we're going to have to improve your control quite a bit, luckily with your shadow clones, we can cut the time down quite a lot, you'll probably be able to start learning wind jutsu. Naruto was excited at that, awesome, what do I do first? You take a leaf and try to cut it in half with your wind chakra, make as many clones as you can, and have them all do the same thing, I'll be keeping an eye on you and give you tips, when we're done, we'll have you disperse the clones one by one, so that you don't pass out from information overload, Asuma told him. Naruto created as many clones as he could and got started. Naruto got back to the apartment and fell down on the bed, exhausted. Mei walked in and laughed, rough day Naruto-kun. Naruto sighed, that was most training I've ever done in one day, even when I trained with Paravi Sage for the Chunin exams. You're wind right? Naruto nodded, how far have you gotten with the lead cutting exercise? About a third of the way up the leaf, you'd think anyone could teach it, but there's a lot of little trick you have to be a wind user to understand, Asuma-sensei is a really good teacher, Naruto told her. Mei's eyes got a little wide, wow in just one day, that's pretty impressive. Naruto smirked at the praise, will the shadow clones helped, once I dispersed them it got a lot easier. I used as many clones as I could, I lost count when I got up to 300, and I was only halfway there. Mei's eyes got very wide at that, you made that many clones, I knew had large chakra reserves, but wow. Naruto laughed loudly, yeah, between being in Yuzumaki and having the QB's chakra filtered into me, my reserves are pretty big, they make training easier, but chakra control harder, but I learned to use it to my advantage. They smiled, you train very hard. Naruto's face got serious, I have to, I've got to protect everyone important to me, including you, and I can't let my dad down. He died believing I would be the one bring peace to the world, and I'm going to. May laid down next to him, I know you will, and I'm glad you think of me as important enough to protect. He smiled and they shared a brief kiss, they soon drifted off to sleep, resting to get ready for the next day. Tsunade couldn't believe what she reading, couldn't believe some this insane. The Achiha massacre was just a cover, a story made up to cover for the Achiha, trying to overthrow the village, even worse, things hadn't gone as planned, the civilians and children were supposed to live, Itachi hadn't intended on killing them, someone had interfered and killed everyone Itachi didn't. Itachi left the village, hoping he would someday be finished by his brother, the one person he could never bring himself to kill, but until that time he was a spy for Jiraiya and the Akatsuki. Itachi couldn't do much without being found out, but something was better than nothing. Tsunade sighed and placed the scroll back in the Hokage library in the vault, next to Naruto's new scrolls. She left feeling rather sick to her stomach, the life of a ninja was a hard thing to bear at times. Naruto woke and smiled at the sight of Mei next to him, he had grown to really enjoy that sight. He gave her gentle kiss on neck to wake her up, which of course she did. Morning Naruto-kun. Naruto continued to smile morning Mei-chan, how are you? Pretty good, I've been thinking about who I'm going to have as my bridesmaids, any thought to your groomsmen? Mei asked. Naruto frowned, no not really, I'm gonna ask Sasuke to be my best man, doubt he'll accept. Mei nodded, remember you have to pick two from the leaf and two from the mist, you can pick the two from the mist when we get there, we won't be married for a month after. Alright, who are gonna be your two from the leaf? Naruto asked. Mei laughed, I thought about Anko, but they'd never let me do that, still she'll be fun at the reception. I pick Sakura and Hinata, oh and I put Ino in charge of flowers so she doesn't complain. Good, I'm gonna go get a shower and find Sasuke before I have to start training, she you in a bit, Naruto said getting out of bed. Alright, see you soon Mei rolled over and fell back asleep. Sasuke was busy training when Naruto walked up, hey Sasuke, you got my nude. I guess, what do need? Sasuke asked. Naruto smiled, his tone wasn't his usual one that said I'm better than you, Wheel, I was wondering if you'd maybe be willing to be my best man at the wedding. Sasuke thought about it, before he would have said no outright, but now, he thought it might not be such a bad idea, he was trying to make an effort not to lose his only real friend, sure, why not. Naruto was shocked alright great, this means a lot to me. Thank you. Sasuke smirked, alright, just don't get all sentimental on me. I gotta go, see soon Sasuke, Naruto said, and ran off to the other trying grounds. The group of four ninjas, all from the hidden sound, watched from a distance, they couldn't help but think things were going to get complicated. Naruto had gotten into a bit of a Rushinin for the past few weeks, trained with Guy in the morning, trained with Asuma during the day and see Mei at night. He had just a week left in the leaf, and things were going quite well, he could now complete the leaf cutting exercise, and could infuse Kubikaramj with some wind chakra, making it able to cut through nearly anything, combined with his new refined Tejutsu and Asuma's Kenjutsu, things were going quite well. 
B had just woken up and was getting ready to leave, Mei had woken up as well, she had a meeting with Tsunade about Naruto's transfer. So, what are you and Asuma going to be doing today? She asked the blonde. Actually, he just finished teaching two wind moves, great breakthrough and slicing air palms, I was actually gonna see if I could find Tsunade when you go to see her and get out some of those wind scrolls my parents left me. Naruto replied, with a hint of pride in his voice. Mei was happy to hear that, her future husband was getting stronger at a rate no one could believe, great, always happy to spend a little time with you Naruto-kun. Naruto smirked, oh believe me I know, you want us to wait till the wedding, but if you keep doing the things that you did last night, I won't be able to control myself. Mei laughed, I didn't hear you complaining. Naruto laughed in return, no, I guess you didn't. They walked out of the apartment and started heading towards the Hokage's office. Mei glanced back at Naruto, you're making great progress with your wind style, but unfortunately, the mist isn't much better off when it comes to wind user than Leaf is, and we only have one qualified seal expert, only he would be able to help you with sealing. And a kid your age who's pretty good with wind style who might be able to help you. Dot. Naruto raised an eyebrow, really, who are they? Our seal expert's name is Mizura Shinsuke, he was actually one of the only non-bloodline users who was willing to help us. If he hasn't figured out a way to seal a Vugaru from his tailed beast chakra, I don't think we could have one, said Mei with an inward look. You mean like the one Orochimaru used on me? Naruto asked. Mei shook her head, no, Orochimaru is considered to be a butcher when sealing, other than his curse mark, which is only any good, thanks to using dark chakra. Naruto nodded, and the wind user. Well, he's not actually a wind user, he just can use wind, he actually about your age. He has a bloodline known as Dragon Flame Release, which due to his wind chakra being mixed in with his fire chakra, makes any fire jutsu he uses incredibly powerful. He learned how to separate them to improve his control, his name is Zawabo Kursuki. Naruto nodded again, and Mei thought back to the first time she had met each of them. Flashback, Mizura. The 13-year-old Mei stood watching the The Resistance debate with interest, she may have only been 13, but she was at the level of Jonin, so she was allowed to sit in on the meetings. Look, I just don't think we can trust this guy, he might be a spy for Yugeru. One of them said. I don't think so, Yugeru still thinks we're just a bunch of unorganized smaller groups, he hasn't shown any sign that he knows we all work together, we've been very careful about that, another spoke up. Then how did he know that we were all one group? Someone asked. He's the best sealer in the mist, maybe he's been using sound recording seals, one suggested. Then why wouldn't he tell Yugeru, why does wanna help us? I bet Yugeru knows and sent him in to spy. Mei was getting stressed from the loudness of the room and decided to speak up herself. Well, if he was a spy and he can use recording devices, why Yugeru even bother to send in a spy? He would just arrest us all now. We need all the help we can get, I say we take the risk. One of the leaders spoke next, exactly what I was thinking. We could really use a seal expert. If you really want to see if you can trust him, why not just ask him why he's willing to help us? Mei suggested. They all nodded, it was better than nothing. Please send Mizura in. The 15-year-old with medium-length black hair and hazel eyes walked into the room, now, Mizura, please tell us why you're willing to help us when no one else without a bloodline will. Mizura paused and began to speak, my father was one of the executioners for the bloodline purge before he died. I went to watch him once when I was younger, I watched a woman beg for her son's life, he was only four months old, I watched my father stick a scalpel in his neck. I watched his mother collapse down on the ground, she didn't cry, didn't lash out for revenge, she just laid there broken. They killed her next, she didn't fight at all, when I asked him about it, his response was she just didn't understand it was for the good of the mist, if that was for the good of the mist, then the mist needs to change. I can't forget that look on her face, watching the life leave her eyes as she watched her son die, I just need to do something, anything to help. Azura was an official member of the resistance within an hour. Flashback, Zawabo. The twelve-year-old Mei was walking through the through the forest on the outskirts of the village when she heard a noise nearby. She looked around until she found the source, a small boy brown-haired, fair-skinned boy was crying into his arms. Mei sat down next to him and asked him, are you okay, why are you crying? He looked at her with large green eyes, I'm a monster sniff I killed him, I didn't mean to kill him, I swear sniff. What do you mean? Mei asked. I went to do a fire jutsu my teacher had showed me, it was supposed to make a little stream thing from my mouth, he said to use just a little and I did, but it went nuts and burned really big, and and he buried his face in Mei's shoulder and cried. Mei could easily figure out what happened, he was trying to use flickering flame tongue, and he must have had some kind of bloodline that enhanced it, before the teacher could figure out what was happening. Mei just let him cry in her shoulder, she didn't mind, the poor boy needed it. 
He had ended up joining the resistance and learning about his bloodline, which he named Dragon Flame Release, and stayed close with Mei, who he came to view as a big sister. We'll we're at the tower, see you later Mei-chan, said Naruto snapping Mei out of her thoughts. Oh alright. See you Naruto-kun, she replied, and they parted ways. Naruto walked into Tsunade's office and looked around, he found Tsunade in the Hokage's vault, reading a scroll and mumbling to herself, hey Bachin, you care if I grab some of my scrolls from here? Tsunade nodded, yeah fine, just leave everything like you found it. Shouldn't you be leaving for that console meeting with Mei? Naruto asked. Tsunade looked up startled, damn it. I'll see you later. She hurried from the room and failed to realize she hadn't out the scroll properly on the shelf, and it quickly fell. Naruto shook his head and placed it back on the shelf. He glanced at it and got a little confused, it said it's a massacre S ranked classified. That didn't make sense, why would there be anything classified about that, what could be secret about that? Naruto shook his head and grabbed the scrolls he needed and left, maybe he would ask Sasuke about it later. Naruto looked at one of the scrolls he had grabbed, it was his father's, and was labeled wind-style cyclone shuriken, which would make a concentrated shuriken of wind to be thrown, that would make a small impact and send waves of slicing wind at the enemy. It looked like it was meant to eventually be combined with the Rasengan. He looked it over again and got to work. Naruto was walking home, having made a little bit of progress on the Cyclone Shuriken, and saw Sasuke walking by, so he flagged him down. Hey Sasuke, he screamed. Sasuke looked up, what? I know it's kinda none of my business, but we would there be a document about the Ichiha massacre that was classified, I saw one in the Hokage's vault today, and I'm kinda curious. Naruto asked. Sasuke frowned, I don't actually know. That doesn't make any sense, what secrets could there be about that I gotta know what's in that scroll. I could sneak you into the vault if you want, Naruto suggested. Sasuke raised an eyebrow, you'd do that for me. Why? Naruto shrugged, you're my friend, of course I would, besides, no one's better at sneaking into the Hokage's office than me. Sasuke nodded, alright, tonight then. Meet me on the roof of the building next to it at about 9 o'clock, Naruto said, and they parted ways. Naruto got back and informed Mei on the day's events making her laugh, don't you have any respect for Tsunade at all? Naruto laughed in return, nope, so how did the council meeting go? Mei scowled that War Hawk Danzo tried to discreetly put in a clause that would allow them to raise any kids we might have here. Luckily Tsunade and I stomped that out. Naruto smiled, do you ever think about us having kids? Mei smiled back, of course, I've always wanted kids, what about you? Naruto thought for a second, I don't know, I never really had a family, so this is all kinda new to me. Mei nodded, it's okay, you've got plenty of time to think about, I'm sure you're gonna warm up to the idea, why don't you head out, oh and if you get caught, you never told me about this. Naruto roared with laughter and headed out to meet Sasuke. Naruto and Sasuke stood in the Hokage's vault with a scroll in hand Sasuke couldn't believe how easily Naruto had gotten them there, where did you learn how to sneak in here that easily? Naruto laughed, I practically lived here when I was younger, it's gotten pretty easy for me. Sasuke smirked and opened the scroll, they began to read. Sasuke was shaking, everything around him was blurry, nothing seemed real. He could hear Naruto's voice, but it seemed like it was a mile away, Sasuke Sasuke Sasuke, come on man talk to me. Everything he knew in this world was a lie, he was just trying to get everything straight in his head. Should he still hate Itachi? Could he trust any of the leaf villagers? Who all knew about this? What in the hell was going on? Why wouldn't they tell me, why did Itachi have to leave, I would have given anything to have had him stay. He did all of this for me and the leaf, so why did he have to leave, why did he make me hate him? Sasuke asked. They want you to have a good life, you would have been like me, the villagers would hate you, they'd view you as the one of the traitors. Itachi needed you to hate him, he wanted you to get strong, kill him, and bring honor back to your clan, Naruto told him. Sasuke had tears in his eyes, I wouldn't have cared if they hated me, if I had Itachi with me it wouldn't matter. I looked up to him, he was everything I wanted to be, and then the massacre happened. I thought I was all alone, I couldn't trust anyone after what Itachi did. Naruto put a hand on his shoulder, he did this so you could create whatever kind of life you wanted, held back by nothing. Sasuke don't waste that. I don't know, I always said I would rebuild my clan, but the more I learn about the more impossible that goal seems, Sasuke told him. Naruto frowned, bullshit, my whole life people have either viewed me as a monster that needed to be locked away or weapon to be used. I'm gonna bring peace to the ninja world, something that seems impossible, but damn it I'm gonna do it. Sasuke looked at him, I just need some time to think, don't tell anyone about this, just just let me try to straighten this out in my head. Naruto nodded, alright, just don't don't anything rash okay. Sasuke just looked at him and left Naruto to worry about his friend. 
Sasuke was walking home, just trying to figure out what all of this meant, when he heard a rustle in the trees and fell chakra signatures near the treetop, whoever the you are, come out now and won't kill you. Four people dropped in front of him, a girl with red hair and a bandana, and fat man with brown skin, a six-armed man, and white-haired man with green lips. They all looked kinda freaking, the one with white hair spoke up, so, you're Lord Orochimaru's next project, interesting, you don't look like much. I'm Seiken, the red-haired girl is Tayuya, the six-armed one in Kitamaru, and the fat one is Jirobo. Sasuke scowled, what does that sneak freak want with me? The fuck did you just say, Tayuya swore. Um Tayuya, Jirobo began. Not one word fattest, she snapped. Seiken spoke up again enough you too, now then, Lord Orochimaru is offering you the power you seek to destroy your brother. He can make it so that the curse mark is even more powerful than it is now. All he asks in return is your loyalty, nothing less, nothing more. And if I refuse? Sasuke asked. Kitamaru spoke up next, then I tie your ass in web and drag you back to be used for experiments. You act like it would be easy to take me down, Sasuke shot back. Seiken sighed, look, we've made our offer, you think on it, and then, contrary to what my six arm friend said, you can come if you please, and we'll leave you alone if you don't want to, we don't want you if you're uncooperative, it'll cause more trouble than good, we'll be at the gate at midnight. The four of them jumped back into the trees, and Sasuke frowned, it seemed as though all of the major decisions in his life were going to be decided on in one day. Naruto got to the apartment found Mei sleeping, he walked up to the head and gently shook her awake, Mei groggily looked up and smiled, hey Naruto-kun, what's up? Let's just say it was very eventful Mei-chan can I ask you something important? Naruto asked. Mei looked up, she could tell this was important, Naruto-kun what is it? It's just, the thing with Sasuke and all these secrets it's got me wondering Mei-chan, did you only get close to me for the sake of the mist, or do really care about me? Naruto looked up at her with hopeful eyes. May looked surprised, Naruto-kun, we both know that this got started because of a political marriage, but I of course I care about you. I've gotten to know you, and you're a great guy, if I'm being forced to marry someone I'm glad it's you. Naruto-kun you don't need to worry, I like you a lot, I don't know if I would call it love yet, but I need you to know that I would never play you like that. Naruto smiled, thanks Mei-chan, that means a lot. Mei got a seductive smile on her face, want to have a little fun before bed to ease your mind. Yes please. Naruto said and leaned forward to capture her lips in a kiss. Naruto woke up to the sound of a bird tapping on his window, he looked over to see it was a messenger bird. He opened the window and took the message. Naruto couldn't believe what he read I sighed, Sasuke was attempting to leave the village, he was on his way to the hidden sound as he read. Naruto was screaming at the top of his lungs, why would he leave, I thought he had changed. It doesn't make sense. Shikamaru and Naruto had been chosen to lead the retrieval mission, they had Kiba, Niji and Choji with them. Choji spoke up next, Naruto maybe there's more to this than we think. Look it doesn't matter, all that matters right now is that we find him, Kiba told them. They all nodded except for Naruto, he just stood there and waited until it was time to head out. They had a slight advantage due to that fact they had to complete Sasuke's curse mark, so they had time to catch up. They could still catch him, Naruto could still find out why. They had been traveling non-stop for the past hour, Kiba told them they were gaining on the scent of the sound ninja. Niji activated his Byakugan to look around, I can see one person up ahead, looks like one of them split from the group. Shikamaru scowled, damn, we don't have time for this. Toji spike up, you guys keep moving, I'll handle this you guys go one ahead. You sure, Shikamaru asked. Yeah, you guys keep going, Choji told them. They left and Choji jumped into the clearing, the battle was about to start. They continued on for about 20 minutes, when Niji told them he saw another person out on a branch. We don't have freaking time for this, Naruto yelled. Shikamaru beepies the situation, we need Kiba to keep us in the scent, and Naruto's definitely the strongest of us, it we best to save him, just in case we meet someone too strong for us, so that leaves me or Niji. You go on ahead, the team needs your intelligence more than my eyes, Niji told Shikamaru. Shikamaru nodded, alright, catch up with us when you can. They left as Niji jumped onto a branch near some six-armed man, the man started the fight by shooting webbing at him, Niji could tell this was gonna be tough. They kept gaming on Sasuke to the point that they were only 15 minutes behind, they were stopped by a red-headed girl screaming at them, hey dumb fucks. I don't know how you got this far and I don't care, you should head stop right here. Shikamaru sighed and made hand seal, Kiba, Naruto, get moving. I just caught in shadow possession, but you don't have much time. What the fuck, when do you do this, let me go damn it, Tayuya swore. Go already, Shikamaru told them, and they went on their way. Seiken was getting nervous, the leaf ninja were just a few minutes away from them, and Sasuke couldn't come out for another 10 minutes, he stopped when he looked to see an ill white-haired man up ahead, what the hell are you doing here, I thought you were dead. 
I would be soon, give me the boy I'll go as fast as I can, you hold the others off, he told him. Just as he left Saken saw the leaf ninja closing in, too late, by the time you get to him it'll be finished, and he'll belong to Lord Orochimaru. Naruto get moving, I can handle this freak, you need to talk to Sasuke when he wakes up, Kba yelled. Naruto jumped into the trees and started running towards the man carrying Sasuke, while Kiba got into battle position. Naruto continued on to find the white-haired man alone next to an empty barrel, where is he? That is none of your concern, what you need to be worried about is me killing you, the man replied. Naruto got ready to fight when a green-blue entered the scene, it was Lee, and he was seemed to be drunk, Naruto hiccup, you get going hiccup, I want to soar with this hiccup, guy. Naruto chose not to look a gift horse in the mouth and went after Sasuke, leaving Lee to have his fun. Naruto had reached the valley of the end to find Sasuke standing in the middle. He looked up at Naruto and motioned for him to come over. Naruto screamed as ran towards him, Sasuke. Naruto reached Sasuke, he was panting slightly, Naruto Sasuke began. Naruto cut him off, what the hell. I thought you finally understood, I thought you were finally gonna stop obsessing over your brother, but no. Why damn it, why the hell are you leaving, and if you say it's to get strong enough to kill your brother, I'm gonna kick the every living shit out of you. Naruto I'm going undercover, Sasuke finished. What? Naruto was dumbfounded. Sasuke looked at the ground, Naruto, I still don't know how to feel about the leaf, Itachi, anything really. The only person I feel I can really trust is you, which is why I feel I owe it to you to tell you the truth. Other than Tsunade you're the only one who know about this. I'm sorry but I just need to get out of the village for a while, and this seems like the best way to do it. Naruto was still confused, what about your friends who almost died to bring you back? Tsunade has Jonin keeping an eye on all of them, if things get to Suroyas they'll intervene, Sasuke told him. You really need to do this? Naruto asked. Sasuke nodded, yes I do. Naruto had tears in his eyes, fine, good luck, I guess I won't be seeing you at the wedding. No you won't, your good friend Naruto, thank you for everything. Sasuke had moist eyes as well. Sasuke walked away leaving Naruto to stand there, Naruto turned around and went back towards the leaf, thinking of his friend the entire time. Naruto stood in the Hokage's office with his friends, Sakura was crying, Shikamaru felt bad about getting friends hurt, Shino wished he could have gone on the mission, Kakashi felt like he had failed his students, and Naruto pretend like he hated himself for not being fast enough. Why did he leave? Sakura sobbed. Ino held her friend, it's okay forehead girl, he's just confused that all. Naruto wanted so badly to tell his friend the truth, but he knew he couldn't, I'm sorry Sakura. Sakura looked up and wiped her eyes, it's not your fault, they were too far gone by the time you found out about it. I'm just so sad, Team 7 is gone, without you and Sasuke it's just not Team 7 anymore. Tsunade spoke up next, Sakura, and I had already discussed her becoming my apprentice, so I think I'll just make it official now. Kakashi, you just spend your free time training, the Akatsuki is still out there, and we're going to need you as strong as we can get you. Bakashi nodded, he didn't really want to train another team anyway, Team 7 had meant too much to him to just move on. Sakura went up to Naruto, Naruto, we've got to stay in touch, promise to come visit me every time you're in town. Naruto smiled, of course. Alright everyone but Naruto clear the room, I've got to talk to him, said Tsunade. They did as they were told, what do you need, he asked. Tsunade looked at him, I know you're not going to tell anyone about Sasuke going undercover are you, I know you know so don't play dumb. I'm not going to tell anyone, Naruto whispered, almost to himself. He left the room and went back to the apartment. The last week of being in the leaf went by quickly, he didn't open up to many people about how he was really feeling, only Iruka knew just how sad the boy was, it bothered Mei slightly that he wouldn't open up to her about it. But she knew they had only been together a month she had to give it time. They were going to leave tomorrow, Mei was still worried about Naruto, but she was excited about going back home. She was going to do everything in her power to make it feel like home for Naruto. Naruto and Mei stood at the gate of the Hidden Leaf, saying their final goodbyes to all of their friends. The three girls of the Rookie Nine were up first, don't you worry Mizukagi-san, our flower shop is gonna make your wedding the most beautiful you've ever seen, Ino told her. Sakura smiled, I'm just so happy to be in wedding, I can't believe I'm the Mizukagi's bridesmaid. Father was very pleased to hear I was in the wedding, he said it was good for the image of a claw and head. Hinata stuttered. Sakura ran up to Naruto and gave him a hug, I'm not gonna see you for a month until we have the wedding, and only once a month after that when you come from your ambassador duties, you'd better not forget about me. Naruto smirked, well you have hit me a lot, I think my memory might be impaired, Sakura shot him a look, of course I'll remember you Sakura-chan. Shikamaru sighed, goodbyes are too troublesome. Dibble laughed, and that is why I was made the new best man instead of you. 
Shikamaru shrugged, I just wish I could go with Joji and help his family handle the cooking, that sounds much easier than being a groomsman, but my mother wouldn't let me back out, this also. Troublesome, everyone else finished for him, they all broke out in laughter. Iruka told gave Naruto a hug, and they nodded to each other, they both knew nothing needed to be said there. Jiraiya shook Naruto's hand and told him to keep it up with the toad training, and whispered to him that his parents would be proud. Kakshi offered Naruto one of his books so he could prepare for the wedding night, causing Mei to send him a threatening glance. Tsunade gave him a bone-crushing hug and told him that if he became a pervert like his teacher, she'd smack him, causing Naruto to nod quickly. Guy and his little twin Lee told Naruto not to let his flames of youth burn out, and Niji simply told him to keep defying fate. Anko told him to enjoy his wedding night and maybe if she got drunk enough she'd join him and his wife, making Naruto blush and or with laughter. Kakashi pouted and asked why she got to make jokes, which Mei simply responded to by saying she actually thought Anko was funny. The jonin shook his head went back to reading his book. Naruto had tears in his as he looked out at all his friends, thanks guys, for everything. My life wasn't always great, but you guys really made it feel like home. I promise to see you all as soon as I can. I'll never forget you guys, you're all awesome. Mei smiled gently at her soon-to-be husband, Ao just arrived, it's time to head out, she looked out at all of Naruto's friends, thank all of you for everything you've done for Naruto, I'll make sure you're all an active part of Naruto's life, I promise. Naruto nodded and they began to head out, he took one last look at his old home, he was really going to miss it. They were traveling to the mist when a sudden outburst from Naruto stopped them, aw damn it. They looked at him confused, what? Naruto frowned, I forgot to talk to Pervy Sage about adding you on to the Toad summoning contract. Mei looked stunned, why would you do that? Pervy Sage told me it's common for married couples to add one another to their summoning contracts, it only makes sense to put you on it, you're great with the Toad's three main elements, water, earth, and fire for their oil. It just makes sense, I'm gonna give to our kids anyway. Naruto told her. Mei nodded, it did make sense, she thought about what he had said and smirked, so, you do want us to have kids. Naruto blushed, well I thought about it, and yeah, I do. I've always wanted to have a family, so why wouldn't that involve kids? I mean I don't want any right now, but eventually kids sound kinda cool. Mei walked over and kissed him on the cheek, I'm glad you feel that way. Naruto blushed again, I'm gonna summon Gamakichi, just give me a sec. Naruto made a few hand seals and pressed his hand to the ground, a plume of smoke shot up, and a small toad appeared, yo. Oh hey Naruto, would you summon me? Gamakichi asked. I was wondering if it would be possible to add my soon-to-be wife, Mei, to the summoning contract, we're heading to the mist right now, so please make it quick. Naruto told him. Amakichi nodded, oh yeah, there's a whole thing for that, it's actually pretty easy, I'll tell you all about on the way. They continued to travel, and Gamakichi told Naruto how it worked, it was pretty simple really. Once they were married Naruto would summon the boss toad, there would be a small ceremony promising loyalty to Naruto and the toads, and Mei would sign her name if Gamabunta felt she was worthy. Since she was a Kage, Naruto was pretty sure Gamabunta would feel she was worthy. They had finally reached the gates of the hidden mist, Naruto could see several faces very happy to see Mei return to the village. Naruto could see two women, one with brown long hair who must have been about 18, and thin woman who looked like a much prettier Kisum, with light blue skin, dark blue lips and hair, which was a little short who looked about 15. The one with blue hair was first to speak, so you're Mei's new boy toy, Naruto raised an eyebrow, just kidding cutie, I'm Hairi Hashigaki, it's nice to meet you. Hashigaki, are you related to that guy who tried to kill me? Naruto asked. Hairi gave a nervous laugh, yeah sorry about Kisum, he wasn't always like that. After he was forced to kill four of the seven swordsmen he kinda lost faith in the mist. I'll never forgive those bastards from the Akatsuki who took advantage of him when he was vulnerable like that, she finished angrily. The other girl nodded, my father was one of the swordsmen Yugeru forced Kisum to kill, he was Fuguki Shikazan. I hated Hiri at first, but once we got to know each other we agreed it was Yugeru's fault, although I guess now we know we know it's the Akatsuki's fault, they really seem to have an interest in the seven swordsmen. I'm Rituji by the way. Wow you guys knew some of the seven swordsmen, that's amazing. I actually wield Zabuza's old sword, Naruto said, showing them the blade. They both sat ires at it in awe, it was really quite amazing, just the craftsmanship alone was sight to behold. Mei decide to introduce the two further, Yuri here has a very powerful affinity for water, and Rituji use hair-based jutsu like her father, although it's not a bloodline. They're my other two bridesmaids and two very close friends of mine, you should really get to know them better if you can. Naruto smiled, we have to go see the council right, let's just have them go with us, and we can talk on the way, Naruto said, offering the two his arms. Both Hairi and Rituji smiled and accepted, wow Mei, cute and polite, you bagged a good one. Mei laughed and shook her head. 
Admittedly she was slightly bothered she didn't get an arm to be guided with. They reached the Mizukagi's building after a nice wall in which Naruto learned a lot his new friends. He learned about Mei meeting them after breaking up an argument between the two when they were younger, about how over the next three years the two would slowly become good friends, and they even managed to sneak in a threat towards Naruto about if he ever hurt Mei. It was an interesting walk for sure. They entered the council's chambers and took their seats, Naruto was right next to Mei at the center of the council table, with the rest of them surrounding her. Mei stood up announced the meeting had officially began, and they all went right to the topic on everyone's mind, Naruto Uzumaki. I for must say, first and foremost, that having this boy here presents a major risk, one councilman began. Mei stopped him there, all right let me stop this before it starts, Naruto may be a risk, but he'd be a risk we had to protect even if I didn't marry him. If we're allied with Alethem we're going to have to defend either way. Well maybe we should have chosen different allies, another councilman suggested. All the other villages have Jinjurikas as well, at least we were smart enough to chose the strongest village. Mei responded. Another councilman was about to speak, but was cut off by Mei, it's not up for discussion, this is final, does anyone have anything real to discuss? They all grew quiet, no one really had anything to say. One councilman finally said, perhaps we should just discuss the wedding. They spent the rest of the time discussing how the wedding would go, and who all would be invited, it was rather boring, but better than the political discussions. The meeting ended late and they were both exhausted, neither of them could wait to get home and get some rest. Naruto had never seen the Mizukagi's estates either, and he was very eager to see his new home. They continued walking until Mei stopped them at a large three-story house, well here we are. Naruto couldn't believe his eyes, wow we live here. Mei nodded, yup, come on, I'll show you around. They took tour of the large mansion, 15 bedrooms, 4 bathrooms, a massive dining hall, even a hot spring for bathing, it was really amazing. They reached the master bedroom, and Mei went to get changed, leaving Naruto to look around. It had a very large bed, with a beautiful bed frame. Just about everything in the room was beautiful, it was really a sight to see. Mei walked back out in her usual sleeping attire, and and Naruto got changed as well. It had been a long day, and Naruto was going to have to find Mizura and Zawabo tomorrow, to help with his ceiling and wind chakra. Naruto sighed, he never really took a break anymore, he would have to change that when he got married. Mei could sense what he was thinking and cuddle up to him, look at it this way, at least you aren't like me, and have to do paperwork all day long, at least training is fun. Naruto laughed, with the way they all talked about paperwork, maybe bringing peace to the ninja world was gonna be easier than be Hokage ever would have been. Naruto awoke to his first day in the mist to a messenger knocking on the door, Mei had awoken before him, so she answered it. It was a messenger nin, informing them that the council want to see just how powerful Naruto was. Mei sighed, she had been expecting this, sorry Naruto-kun, I know you were hoping to go and find Zawabo and Mizura right away, but they won't stop until you show them what you can do come to think of it, I don't think I fully know what you can do. Naruto gave his classic foxy grin, well then, come by and watch with the council. After all, you need to know how freaking awesome your husband is. Mei laughed, alright then, you get dressed and let's get going, those old pricks don't like to be kept waiting. Naruto reached the council room, Kubikurumj was strapped on his back and his soon-to-be wife by his side, alright, I heard you guys wanted to see just what I can do, so let's get out to the training grounds so I don't blow the roof of this place. One of the councilmen sneered, you seem pretty BP short stack. Naruto shot him a grin, wait do you hold off on calling me BP until you see what I can do. They all nodded and went down to the training grounds, I've got people to go see, so let's make this quick, Naruto said, and made about a dozen shadow clones. They all started to mutter about large chakra reserves, and Naruto just kept smirking, you guys haven't seen anything yet. The clones began to go through hand signs, one used great breakthrough, another slicing a palms, cyclone shuriken was done by one of them. And two of them helped Naruto perform a Rasengan, while another used a wind enhanced kubikurum to slice through several logs. The council was stunned at the pure display of power, this kid was definitely Chunin material, hell he might have been Jonin material, impressive, we understand you can summon the legendary boss Toad, may we see it. Naruto shook his head, hell no, if I called him for something like this, he'd kill me. The council nodded, fine, we're satisfied with your display and rank, you are dismissed. May walk over with a large smile on her face, very impressive, you'll be a Jonin in no time if you keep this up. Naruto shot her another foxy grin, well I need to be strong if I'm marrying the Mizukagi. Mei leaned over and gave him a small peck on the lips, I suppose you do, Mizura is on a mission, but he should be back later today, go and find Zawabo for now, he's at a training ground just east of here. Naruto nodded, alright see you later. Naruto went east until he found a burned training ground, he felt safe to assume Zawabo was here. 
He found him practicing a fire jutsu on one of the trees, he looked about 14, he stopped when he saw Naruto coming, hey there, can I help you with something? He asked cheerfully. Naruto smiled at him, I'm Naruto, and I was wondering if I could get some help with my wind jutsu, I know you're not much better than me with it, but it's still nice to have someone to bounce ideas off of. Zawabo looked up in realization, oh, you're Mei's soon-to-be husband, it's nice to finally meet you, I'm Zawabo, but I guess you already knew that. I'd be happy to help you in any way I can, Mei's a close friend of mine. Naruto nodded, yeah Mei mentioned that, which reminds me, will you be in the wedding as one of the groomsmen, she made some of my friend's bridesmaids, it only makes sense to make some of hers groomsmen. Zawabo smiled brightly, of course, it'd be my pleasure. Who all else is gonna be in the wedding? Naruto thought for a second, you wouldn't know any of my friends, the only ones you would know is Rituji and Hairi. Zawabo went wide-eyed, Hairi's gonna be in the wedding. Sweet, maybe I'll get to walk down with her. Naruto raised an eyebrow, do you have crush on her? Zawabo blushed, so what if I do, you aren't one of those assholes who make fun of her for her skin are you? Naruto raised his hands in defense, no, no, I just thought maybe you could ask her to be your date for the wedding. Zawabo looked at the ground, nah, I don't think she likes me like that. Have you ever asked her out? Naruto asked. Well no, Zawabo responded. Then how do you know, maybe she likes you back? Naruto suggested. Zawabo thought about it for a second, I don't know, maybe. Why don't we just move on to Jutsu? Naruto pulled out one of his scrolls and they got to work. Naruto and Zawabo had made a decent amount of progress on his Jutsu, Zawabo really knew about the theoretical part of Wind style. Naruto had just gotten word that Mizura had returned and he went to go and find him. Naruto saw him leaving the Mizukage's building and went up to talk to him, hey Mizura. Mizura looked up, yes, may I help you? Naruto went to shake his hand, hi, I'm Naruto, I'm guessing Mei told you about me, I was wondering if you could help me in learning about sealing. Mizura smiled, Naruto, yes, Mei did tell me about you. I would be happy to teach you about sealing, it'll be nice to have another sealer in the mist other than myself. Naruto was a little off put by how stoic and calm yet pleasant the man seemed, kinda like a happy Niji which didn't seem wrong, but decided not to worry about and just go with the flow, great, I was reading something about gravity seals, and I was thinking that those would be perfect, I saw a friend of mine use something like them, and the results were fantastic. Mizura nodded, yes, they are quite useful for building one speed, strength and stamina, and once they are removed your body becomes even faster, but please do not tell anyone that I can do this for you, and I would advise not to advertise your sealing skills either, once people learn you know how to seal they'll never leave you alone in asking for favor involving it. Naruto understood what he meant, and they started to go into the art of sealing, Naruto decided to ask Mizura quickly, oh and before I forget, I know it would mean a lot to me if you were in the wedding, she invited two of my friends to be bridesmaids, so I thought I would invite you to be a groomsman. Mizura nodded with a smile, of course, it would be my honor. Naruto got home and fell back onto the giant mattress in the master bedroom. It had really been a long day, much longer than he would have liked, he had a feeling the next few weeks were going to be like this. Mei looked at Naruto and shook her head, looks like both of us had a busy day, did you track down Mizura and Zawabo? Yeah, we got a start on what we would be working on, we should have the gravity seal ready by the day after tomorrow, and I've got a good start on a couple new wind jutsus, he told her, oh and I asked Mizura and Zawabo to be my other two groomsmen, I hope that's okay. Mei smiled brightly, no, that's great, you really did that. Thank you, this is really important to me. Naruto just nodded, yeah, I know. I'm sorry I'm if I seem out of it, I'm just really tired. Alright, I'm pretty tired myself. I'm gonna go get changed, see you in just a sec, Mei responded. It didn't take long for Naruto to fall asleep, it really had been a long day. The next three weeks passed incredibly quickly, the gravity seals were helping out with Naruto's physical strength. He learned two new wind jutsu, drill wind fist and great air repulsion. The progress he was making was extremely impressive. He had made a lot of new friends in the mist, once the village got to know Naruto, they really came to like him. Mei continued with classic political bullcrap, although after Naruto's display, they stopped really being concerned with him. The two of them had grown very close over the past few weeks, they still hadn't said I love you, but considering they had only been together two months, they were doing quite well. The wedding was just a week away, and everyone in the mist was very excited, things like this didn't happen often, and was gonna be one hell of a party. Naruto woke up and walked to look out the window, was now only two days away from the wedding, something he still couldn't believe. He saw Mei had woke up too, and walk up to her, how are you feeling? Mei smiled, good, you? Naruto rubbed the back of his head, a little nervous but excited. Mei leaned up and kissed him, I know, so am I. 
Naruto looked at her and smirked, my friend will be arriving today, I can't wait to see them again, Naruto told her and walked out the door to go meet them, it was kinda nice to know people had come just to see him. All of Naruto's friends arrived at the gate, smiles on their faces, this was gonna be a fun weekend, they could tell. Naruto ran up to meet them, hey guys, what up? They all smiled and as he ran up, it was really good to see him again, Naruto, how have you been, I hope the mist has been treating you well, Tsunade told him. Of course Bachan, I am marrying Mizukagi for Pete's sake. Come on, I know good restaurant where we can catch up. Naruto responded. They all nodded and followed him, he got to hear all of Naruto's new stories about his new life in the mist. Naruto had good time hearing about Sakura's new training, Ino's planning of the flowers, Kiba helping with the Inuzuka dogs, everything. Naruto loved being with his friends again, and Mei came and joined them shortly, and things got even more fun once Hairi and Rituji came and hung out with Anko. The night was great, and it made Naruto even more excited for the wedding. Naruto looked around the room, Kiba, Shikamaru, Zawabo, and Mizura all wore elegant black kimono like the one his was wearing. He was serenely in the groom's room, waiting for his big with his soon-to-be wife. In just an hour he would be married, Mei would be his wife, that still blew Naruto's mind. Kiba walked up and put a hand on Naruto's shoulder, you ready man? Naruto smiled and nodded, yeah, I think I am. It's kinda strange, but I really like Mei. I think we're actually gonna be really happy together, pretty lucky for an arranged marriage. Troublesome as you can be, you tend to get pretty lucky. I guess this is no exception, Shikamaru told him. Naruto laughed, he did seem to always find to make best out of any situation. Zawabo came up and slapped him on the back, well I'm glad you're here, thanks to you, I actually got a date with Hairi. Naruto shook his head, all I did was tell you to ask her out, it wasn't that hard. He has a point Zawabo, the signs were right there, Mizura told him. Zawabo pouted while the rest of them laughed, they wondered if the bridesmaid's room was like this. Sakura, Hinata, Hairi, and Rituji sat patiently waiting for Mei to come out in her dress. The anticipation was killing them, but they knew something like this took time. Mei finally walked out and everyone's jaw dropped, she looked amazing. She wore an elegant white dress that hugged her body, showed just enough cleavage so that it was attractive without being trashy, a simple white veil covered her face, and no straps so that it showed her shoulders. So how do I look? She asked. You look great, you're gonna knock Naruto out, Sakura told her. Wow Mei, you look fantastic, said Hairi and Rituji. Yes, you look very nice, Naruto will be very happy, Hinata said, proud that she had kept control of her stutter, something she intended to do until the wedding was over. She had been working on confidence since Naruto left, she was happy to say she was making great progress. Mei sighed with a small smile, this is really it isn't it, I'm getting married today. She still couldn't believe she was getting married today. She kept saying it over and over in her mind, it was just amazing to her. Mei knew when she became Mizukagi she would likely have to be politically married, but she honestly never expected to actually like her husband, she thought she was going to get some uptight jackass who felt it was nothing more than a job to marry her. She never thought he would actually put forth some effort in this relationship. Naruto had really surprised her, she honestly wasn't sure if she could have gotten anyone better. She was really starting to feel this whole thing could work out. The time had finally arrived, Naruto stood at the altar, waiting for his soon-to-be wife to walk down the aisle. He took a deep breath, it was kinda overwhelming, all of this happening at once, but he knew he could do this, for Mei and his friends, he would do anything. The music played and the doors opened to sight that took Naruto's breath away. Mei stood there, looking absolutely amazing, ow, the man she had come to view as a father, walked her down, and she gave him small kiss on the cheek. Ao smiled and gave her hug, and she walked up to meet Naruto. Tsunade, who was performing the ceremony, began to speak, we're here today to join these two nations and two hearts in marriage. Both of these individuals, who I'm proud to call my friend, exemplify the very thing their villages stand for. Naruto represents the undying and unsurrendering spirit of the leaf, and Mei represents the diversity and ability to survive the mist has become no for. If you would both please read your vows. Naruto pulled his out of his pocket and took another deep breath, Mei, when this all first started I was terrified. I always put on a mask when I'm scared and when I first met it was no exception. Yet, in no time at all, you showed me I could trust you with who I really was. We have a very similar past, we both know about being held back but refusing to give up on our dreams. You made me feel like I really had someone I could talk to, someone who really knew what I'd gone through, I really feel like there's someone just like me out there. I can honestly say with all my heart, I love you mate Terumi. Mei had small tear in her eye, it was the first time either of them had said it, she wiped a tear from her eye and began to speak, Naruto, when I found out I would be married to some person I didn't know, I became sure that I would someone I could never love. Life had never seemed to be kind to me. But then I met you, and you were amazing. 
You're kind, sweet, strong, everything I'd ever wanted in a man. You were always honest with me, you really came to trust me, and it made me feel like I could trust you. We were so similar, so much alike, I really felt like you understood me. I'm glad I was forced into marriage, because if I wasn't I never would have met you, I love you too Naruto Yuzumaki. Tsunade smiled and finished the ceremony, I now pronounce you man and wife, you may kiss the bride. They kissed and everyone cheered, I now present for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Naruto Yuzumaki. The reception was fantastic, amazing food, dancing, everything you could ever imagine. Ino had went a little insane with the flowers, blue and orange roses were everywhere, but it still looked very nice. Kiba danced with Hinata, Zawabo with Hairi, Anko even got Kakashi to dance. Naruto and Mei danced the night away, they were both so happy they had really found someone special, someone to spend the rest of their life with. Mei stepped outside for a moment to get a breath of fresh air, the night had been great so far, but very overwhelming. Well well, little Mei, how have you been? A figure in the shadows asked. Mei didn't even jump, fine kiss him, it is my wedding night after all. The blue-skinned swordsman stepped out, you do know what he contains don't you? Mei scowled, yes and I don't care, he's a great person, and the damn fox doesn't change anything. This um turned serious, for your sake and my sisters you should stay away from him. We will come after him eventually, and when we do nothing will stop us. Mei sent him a wave of killer intent, you have to get through me first. Bissom chuckled, you always were a wild one, don't say I didn't warn you. Kissum jumped away leaving Mei to stand there, she went back inside to spend more time with her new husband. Naruto held Mei close to him as they danced, he felt like whole world had just melted away for a short while, so really meant everything you said up there, you really love me. Mei put her hand onto his chest, of course, I couldn't imagine anything better. Naruto smiled, I'm glad, I really want you to be happy. Mei got a seductive smirk on her face, just wait till tonight, once we get back to the mansion, I'm going to make you very happy. This is gonna be the best weekend of your life. Naruto blushed, should we head out then? Mei nodded, oh yes, I think that we should. She grabbed his hand and rushed at the door. They kisses passionately all the way through the hallway to the master bedroom, once they got there Mei pushed him on the bed and went into the bathroom, I'm gonna put something a little more comfortable on, be right back. Naruto nodded dumbly and waited, Mei walked out wearing a lace black and blue bra with matching panties, you ready for the real deal. Naruto nodded vigorously and she pounced on him, the room would be filed sounds of passion and moans of pleasure throughout the night. Naruto may have been younger, but he could more than keep up with Mei, and with Mei knowing fun things they could try, it was an incredible night for both of them. So, how'd I do? Naruto panted. Mei was panting as well, fantastic, your stamina is amazing. Three straight times, that's just impressive. Naruto smiled, soon the two both drift off to sleep, it had been the most stressful and incredible day they had ever had. Naruto stood with his new wife seeing his friends off at the gate, bye guys, I'll see you in about a month. They all smiled and nodded, Jiraiya walked up to Mei, but she cut him off before he could speak, you'd better not ask what I think you're about to ask. Jiraiya looked surprised, what are you talking about, I was just gonna ask if Naruto was gonna have signed the toad contract. Mei looked relieved, oh good. Yes he was. Jiraiya smiled, good, what did you think I was gonna ask? Mei simply waved the question off, nothing. Bakashi told Naruto to keep up with his training, Sakura told him to come and see her as soon as possible, Kiba asked how his first night with Mei was, earning him a slap on the back of the head, although when Anko asked the same question everyone laughed. They all left and Naruto stood holding Mei's hand, he had a good feeling about the next few years. Naruto spent his first few day of marriage in pure bliss. His wife couldn't seem to keep her hands off him, and Naruto wasn't complaining. The village loved him, they went from being just okay with him to being fantastic to him overnight. Both Naruto and Mei had taken a few days off to relax for their honeymoon, for which they went to a nearby hot spring resort. Mei walking in the couple's spring with nothing but her bikini on, and the two of them spending the rest of the day there was a particular highlight. Zawabo and Hairi continued to date, and Mizura even caught the two together one day, but said nothing under threat of death. Of course life started to turn back to normal once they got home well almost. Mei and Naruto stood in the middle of a large clearing, getting ready to summon Gamabunta, you ready? Naruto asked. Mei nodded nervously, as ready as you can be when you're about to meet a toad the size of mountain. Naruto laughed nervously, I'm sure it'll go fine, just watch for his anger issues. Anger issues? Mei rose as an eyebrow. Naruto decided it was better to show her than tell her, so he went through the hand seals and slammed his hand on the ground. A large amount of smoke filled the clearing, and a booming voice could be heard, who the hell summoned me? Oh, it's the Gaki, what do want shrimp, I was about to have some sake. Naruto jumped of his head and stood next to Mei, this is my new wife, I wanted her to sign the contract. 
Amabunta looked at her, oh yeah, my boy mentioned something about this. So this her huh? Well at least she's cute for a human, what good is she in a fight? I have two bloodlines, lave and boil release, I'm excellent with earth, water and fire style, mate told him. Amabunta nodded, sound good, and my son told me you're kage. I think it's pretty safe to say if you're strong enough, we just have to make sure you're loyal to us and the gaki. May smiled, I can promise you, I would never break either of your trusts. Alright, just have her sign the contract and practice with the toads, you know the drill, said the toad. That's it. You almost killed me, and you just let her join no question, Naruto screamed. Amabunta shrugged, she's a kage, you're not, deal with it. He poofed away while Naruto pouted, May just smiled and they got to work. The next three months were rather uneventful. Naruto went on his visits to the leaf and saw his friends, learn about how they were coming along and all that. Sakura was still learning medical ninjutsu, Lee was healing from his injuries, Shikamaru continued to hate the work of being a chunin, so on and so forth. Yet, every time he went to the leaf, he still thought of his old friend Sasuke. From what Tsunade had told him Sasuke was getting them was incredibly valuable, he was doing quite well. Naruto hoped he was finding what he was looking for and that he would see his old friend again soon. Naruto returned from his third visit with the leaf to find that his wife had mission for him. He was very happy to hear that, he hadn't gotten a real mission since he got to the mist. Naruto smiled and gave his wife a quick kiss, great, what have you got for me? You and Zawaba will be going on mission to recover Kiba, she began. Wait, Kiba's in trouble, why am I just finding out about this now? Naruto screamed. May laughed, not your friend Kiba, the twin blades Kiba. It's one of the seven deadly swords, we've tracked down the missing nin who has it, and we want you and Zawabo to retrieve it. Naruto nodded, oh okay, who has it? Mei pulled out a bingo book, turned to a certain page, and handed it to Naruto, Raiga Kurosuki, second wielder of Kiba, he's extremely talented with lighting chakra, and has developed his own style, that he refers to as, lighting funerals. He seems to have developed some kind of sensory powers we can't quite explain. He didn't have them when he was still in the mist, but they've made him much more deadly. Normally we would send some jonin to do this, but you and Zawabo are jonin level, and also your wind chakra will make his lighting chakra very vulnerable. It should be a decent challenge, but nothing you can't handle. Alright, I'm gonna head home and get packed, what time do I leave tomorrow? Naruto asked. 6 o'clock am don't be late, May got a little smile on her face, I'll be sure to give you a proper send off when I get home tonight. Naruto nodded happily and headed home to prepare for his mission. Naruto and Zawaba were on their way to a small village just outside the hidden mist, Raiga was supposed to be staying there with some bandits. Supposedly he was leading them into the mist with his knowledge of its defenses, and they would raid as much as much as they could. One of the mist spies discovered this and told the Mizukagi immediately, the mist had been trying to retrieve all the seven deadly swords for a while now, and with Kisum having Samahada, they would need to retrieve as many of the other blades first before they could go for him. I still don't get it, how can someone just develop sensory powers out of bow wear? Naruto asked. Zawabo shrugged, I don't know, it does seem kinda impossible. Being a sensor is something you're born with, not something you develop. If we can we should find out how he got them, if it's something we can recreate it would be a major gain for the mist. Naruto nodded, it would be nice to have more sensory ninjas, especially since they're so rare. They reached the hotel they were staying at and went inside. Zawabo paid for one two-person room that he and Naruto would share. They went up to the room and laid down, they were both tired from all the traveling. Zawabo went to go and turn off the light, we'll get up at about 7am tomorrow, alright. Naruto yawned, yeah, sure. They both laid down and drift off to sleep, they would have a big day tracking down Raiga tomorrow. Naruto and Zawabo had been looking for Raiga for a couple hours, but hadn't gotten very far. It appeared most of the town was afraid of him, they wouldn't tell them anything. They decided to start asking if anyone had seen any bandits around, which got them much better results. It appeared that, while the town feared Raiga, they hated the bandits and wanted them gone. Raiga would find out if someone turned on them, but bandits weren't very smart, it was perfectly believable that one of them could let something slip, Raiga wouldn't have any proof that they had told anyone anything. They were able to find out that the bandit were staying at an abandoned mine shaft just outside of town. Naruto and Zawaba were currently on their way to the mine shaft and creating a plan to get Kiba, we're going to have to take out the bandits first, I'm going to use great fire incineration inside the mine shaft, that should fry or at least immobilize all the bandits, Raiga won't be so easy, I imagine he's staying somewhere else nearby, but he'll definitely come after us after once we kill his men. Naruto nodded and got in position above the mine shaft, Zawabo made the proper hand signs and shot a massive stream of fire inside. There was some screaming and Zawabo cleared out, several bandits came running out. They waited till everyone had left and went inside, they found some random pillaged items and sat down and waited for Raiga to arrive. 
It had been about two hours, and Ryaga finally made his way into the cave. He spoke up when he saw Naruto and Zawabo sitting there, so you're the people who killed my men, and you were even nice enough to stick around. How kind of you. Naruto stood up, Raiga Kurosuki, by order of the Hidden Mist you are to either give us the Kiba Blade and return home for trail, or we kill you on sight and take the swords. Your choice. Raiga laughed, oh I will enjoy this funeral, it will be a truly glorious one. Prepare yourself to die. Raiga reached for his swords and channeled lighting into them, steam's lighting shot from the blade, Naruto and Zawabo narrowly missed getting hit. The fight quickly left the mine shaft, and they continued to attempt to land a hit on Raiga, but failed miserably. Raiga would always manage to dodge it, and he continued to attack Naruto and Zawabo, but he almost always ended up hitting them. Naruto couldn't figure out how he was doing it, he must have been using his sensory powers, it was the only way he could do this. Zawabo, we've got to figure out how his sensory powers work if we don't he's gonna fry us, said Naruto. I know, but what are we supposed to do? Zawabo yelled back. Naruto looked back at Raiga and noticed he had a very large hump-looking thing on his back, he appeared to mumbling to it, hey Zawabo, I think he's mumbling to that thing on his back, see if you can separate him from it. Zawabo nodded, alright, but how do we hit him, nothing we've done so far has worked. He was right, if they couldn't hit him how do they separate them. Naruto realized he only had one option, I'm gonna activate the QB's chakra and go all out on this guy, make sure I don't do too much damage and get him when once they're separated. Zawabo went wide-eyed, but nodded. Naruto started to channel the QB's chakra, and his appearance and demeanor immediately changed. His eyes were now red with black slits, his whisker marks were more prominent, and teeth were sharper. He went full out on Raiga, and after about 10 minutes he was able to slash the whatever it was off his back. Out of the Akema child, maybe about 12 years old. That's when Naruto figured it out, Raiga wasn't the censor, this kid saw that Zawabo had Raiga pinned down, looks like he's wasn't that tough without the kid backing him up. Naruto stopped channeling the QB's chakra and walked over, they had a lot to figure out. Raiga ended up killing himself to avoid be captured, the kid who was censor wouldn't talk to them, he just cried for a while and left. Both Naruto and Zawabo agreed it was best just to let him go, he wouldn't help them if they forced him to come anyway. They retrieved Kiba and went home, it took them about two days to get to the mist. Naruto was thrilled to be home, and the council was ecstatic to how the Kiba blades back. Naruto no had another A-ranked mission under his belt, so that was great too, Mei was getting very impressed with her husband. It was an eventual mission to be sure. The end. So how was this part, I hope you like it. And if you like it share this part with your friends, and like the video too. And don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily awesome fanfiction. Okay it's time for me to go.